coastal access, something we all like, something we all support, but often um, it involves some interesting trade-offs. Here we are at Long Marine Lab in Santa Cruz, right on the coastal bluffs, beautiful spot. And uh, so right here, this is a public access trail, so you can walk along the bluffs and uh, see uh, beautiful nature, all kinds of really cool interpretation, like this gray whale skeleton that we have going on here. But note, this is a, a research facility. Right here we have a seawater system, active seawater system. We have all kinds of uh, research things going on. And, uh, and so, so we all like coastal access, but a traditional marine lab, at least in the historic sense, while it's not anti-public, you know, there's experiments and there's sensitive things going on. So you don't necessarily want a bunch of people walking through your experiments, playing with your animals, things you might be working on for years at a time. So uh, granting public access is, uh, comes with you know, a lot of trade-offs and a lot of particular decisions, some of which are hard, some of which are easy. Now universities, like the University of California, Santa Cruz here, obviously see it uh, as part of their public mission to promote things like public access, et cetera. So they're, they're willing participants in this process, but that's not always the case with different uh, landowners. And even with a willing participant like the University of California system, there's always tension, there's always trade-offs. Um, doing things in the coastal zone is always a balancing act always involves some decisions that maybe we wish we didn't have to make. But without the Coastal Act, without the requirement of people being able to come in and experience their coast, um, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't have the opportunities that we have now. We wouldn't have the ability to explore the coast as completely as we do now.